a reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out of the book from daybreak till midday in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it, for he was standing higher up than any of the other people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen. Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is, His Excellency, and Ezra, the priest scribe, and the Levites, who were instructing the people, said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad, and do not weep. For all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go, eat rich foods, and drink sweet drinks and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared, for today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The word of the Lord. Be it was a day of rejoicing. After so many years, of oppression and sadness, the Babylonian captivity was finally over. The Hebrew people were once again free to live under the law of God, the law given to Moses and passed down through generations. Yet, as Ezra reads from the law of God, the rejoicing turns into sorrow and sadness. Because with each word of the law, the Hebrew people are reminded of the sins of their ancestors, the sins of themselves, their own failings and shortcomings before the Lord, and how far they had strayed from this word of God. And we too, we who hold this symbol of the crucifix, before us, the symbol that hangs in our chapels, in our houses, in our schools, the symbol which to us could speak words of shame, could speak the words of the pain, the sins of our ancestors, and our own shortcomings before our crucified Lord. Or so it could, if that were the end of the story. The sound of a cock crow. It was a sound that represented daybreak, new beginnings, bright mornings. But for the Apostle Peter, this sound was forever changed. The sound was no longer a joyful sound, a new and fresh sound. It was now a sound of betrayal of depression, a sound that he would hear every single morning for the rest of his life, a sound that could have reminded him of the time that he was too weak to stand with his friend. But perhaps the story continues. I've often wondered if on that morning on the shore of the Sea of Tiberias, 
when Jesus appears again to his apostles and Peter is reconciled to him, if perhaps a cock had crowed at that time as well. Maybe this symbol, no longer just a symbol of betrayal for Peter, now became the reminder of a promise. The promise that Christ would be with him through the rest of his life as he fulfilled his mission to be the shepherd of the flock. Ezra reminds the people that the law is representative of more than just the sins of the fathers and the sins of the people. Because the law represents the covenant of God. The covenant that God would be with these people throughout and was once again with these people as they began anew. And for us, this symbol of the crucifix, the symbol of our crucified Lord, is a symbol of the continuation of that covenant. The new law promised and fulfilled in the crucified Christ. It's a symbol that, yes, we are weak. Yes, we have failed. And yes, just as the Hebrew people did, we will continue to fail. But through our failures, we have this promise of life, this covenant of things to come. So as we journey through our own exile, we hold on to this promise, knowing that someday we too will be welcomed home with rich food, and sweet drinks.